What's good with the YouTube Convict's Perspective? It's your boy Flacco. On today's video, man, I'm going to bring up an interesting topic, man. I noticed in the comments a couple people were asking, you know, for me to do a video about how I got cut up as an 18-year-old kid. So I'm going to be bringing that up right now in a short little spill. So let's go back to the early 90s. You know, I got jumped in my barrio back in around 1990. I'm from a hood called Barrio Mirpas Locos um, out there in Milpitas, California. I got jumped in at a young age. Me and another homeboy named Rascal. We're at my older homeboy Boo Boo's pad, and the homeboys got to drinking. And um, these were dudes that we looked up to. You know, it was a little different back then. You know, um, dudes that were like 18, 19, 20. They, 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 you know, they they were still they were wearing big old brochas and hairnets and Mongolians and all tatted down. And you know, they were the, they were the homies out there in the streets that were representing. And in my little neighborhood, you know, it was a little bit different than other neighborhoods up north it was actually like a vario that were almost like influenced how la is you know what i mean it was about three streets so when it's surely drive on dempsey road and back in the early 90s you walked through my neighborhood you would see vmls blasted everywhere you would see homeboys walking down the street with the red bonos hanging all chuckled down um the whole neighborhood was tagged up and you couldn't even come into our neighborhood if you were an outsider, even if you were from the town. Unless we knew you, um, then you may get a pass for walking through the neighborhood. But if we didn't know you, you were getting jammed up. And a lot of times it was ending in a fight, a shooting, or, or whatnot. You know, game banging got real real like I've discussed in other episodes, man. And during this time era in Santa Clara County, San Jose and all that, we were kind of influenced by the San Jose culture. Um the gangbanging culture because that's the city that we more aligned to like we used to kick it more on the east side head to east ridge kick it downtown go to hammer and lewis san jose blue jeans and our, our whole stilo like i said before we were all cholo down and our neighborhood though was a, a small little tight-knit pocket it was a little hood and um people would always talk you know whether they were africanos or whether they were other races they'd be like don't go over there that's where all the mexicans are at and so to come into our neighborhood you know what I'm saying? You had to really know us. You know what I mean? There was an incident one time where some Crips, Crips out, out there from San Jose came through. And I got I got a lot, a lot of love later on for Crips from San Jose, but I don't know what, what particular hood they were from. And they got jammed up because they were in all blue. And see, that's how it was back then in the 90s a little bit. Um, a lot of Crips used to trip on North Daniels for wearing red back then because the North Daniel culture just started to blow up in the 90s, like I said. In the 80s, mostly it was older homeboys, small little pockets and neighborhoods. But in the 90s, there was an evolution of homeboys. You know, Colors came out, Mi Vida Loca, Blood In, Blood Out, American Me. And the North Daniel movement took storm out there on the streets. Um, my hood was originally called Barrio de Chicanos, BDC. And we were originally brown priders. And there was another OG hood out there, Vado Sunny Hills, which were homeboys. But a lot of them either went to the joint, got old, had families, and they had kind of died down. So we were originally brown priders. And what ended up occurring at that time, and we used to go get into a lot of the Africanos out there and everyone else. Which later on, we all became cool. It was all town love. But back then, it was on site. There was a lot of different neighborhoods where I'm from. There was a, a Filipino hood called Real Pinoy Bloods, which they were Filipino Bloods, or TMP, Two Night Pinoy. Another hood called CAL, called Criminals at Large, um, or 225. They were uh, uh, Africanos. A lot of them were, were cool with MP hood. And they used to use the word blood, but they weren't really bloods. They wear a lot of red. Then on the other side of town, you had YGC, which was Young Gangster Crips. Um, they were connected with family, or Pineside. And so the game banging scene had really took a storm. Everybody, everybody was wearing like their Dickies, their Cortezes, and their colors. And us at that time, we were fighting for our existence. And what ended up happening was, is in my neighborhood, you know, a lot of these homeboys had older uncles or older, co or older cousins that were North Daniels. And so we ended up changing the name and became North Daniels around, I think, 89 or 90. Um, no, maybe 89, 88, around that time. And formed, formed a gang called Vario Mirpas Locos. And at that time, though, it was it was basically everybody was from different areas in Milpitas. 
but it came together as one hood. Because before they were brown piders, they used to wear brown uh, brown baños on their heads, uh, brown baños, and you know there was no colors. And slowly everything changed, and we changed the name of the hood, and we started wearing a lot of red. And at that time, the game banging scene was really off the hook, man. I was a young kid, man, and I'd, I'd walk through the neighborhood, and I would see it blasted like eight foot letters, you know, big V M Ls, you know. Me and the boss, and they would say through shot, and they'd have all the hoods that they didn't like. It's you know, it would have uh, Sewell, uh, you know, different neighborhoods that they were fucking with. And at that time, you know, I ended up getting jumped in, and most of my homeboys were older. You know what I'm saying? And they started beefing with this one particular hood right around the time that I got into it, man. And you know, this hood was called Vario Maschingon, and a lot of the reasons why they started beefing with this hood is a lot of them used to kick it and post up with these homeboys and these hoods decided to start their own hood and my older homeboys took offense to it and instead of embracing them they didn't want no other hood out there representing the town and these guys weren't representing the town that's the funny thing about it you know the original founder of Mastungon was actually from actually banked west side Sanjo um, Hopper rest in peace you know what I mean um but the mo the overall collective, though, of these dudes, you know, we grew up with in elementary school, junior high and all that, man. And they were a lot of them were raised out there in Milpitas and a lot of them were banging Saho. There was maybe about two or three people that actually banged Mirpas. But my homeboy started to take offense. And their whole thing was, you know, you're from Saho. You shouldn't be banging out here in Milpitas. You know what I'm saying? And they took offense to a lot of these vatos that they were basically claiming the fame which Sanho had a huge rec reputation so a lot of times people would be out of nowhere would say that they were from Sanho and see us was we you know we're small town get down somos pocos better locals we used to do that we used to tag on the walls and put all our names and, and we had a reputation a lot of hoods from San Jose used to respect us because of our get down um, and we, we're, we're deep in our hood you know so I get jumped in my hood, you know, and it was it was it was a crazy time back then, game banging in the nineties, man. And like I said before, in my story, man, I had yet to really like make my bones on the streets. You know what I mean? I was never a punk or anything like that. Um, but I was a skinny, scrawny kid, man, and, and I wasn't like at at the level of where I became later on in my life. You know what I mean? Where I became a hitter out there in the streets, where I didn't care. You know, I was more about hanging out with my homeboys, looking for looking for some type of a, a respect and attention and love that you, I didn't get at home because a lot of situations that were going on there. It was it was a very chaotic time for me. You know, I'd be running around, running away from home, you know, living on the streets, um, you know, me in and out of juvenile hall. And so I ended up getting put on in my neighborhood. Right. And so at that time, you know, I ended up catching some cases and going to juvenile hall and, and as a youngster at that time in juvenile hall i mean you had a lot of hoods that were well known at that time you know what i mean like capitol park bombas bml's most locals uh metal fair horseshoe vnh 12th street west side mob horseshoe all these little little hoods that you had out there they weren't little hoods they were well recognized and i was from a small town not only was from i was from a small town but Look at my complexion and my skin. You know what I'm saying? So I would have to go in there and prove that I was five times downer than the next man. Being from a small city, looking around, having no homeboys. And that really changed who I was, you know, going through that transition, going through the boys' ranch and getting into fights with other other individuals and fighting Sureños. And, you know what I mean? I started getting them up and I started getting the reputation that, look, this dude ain't no punk. And um, from there, you know, you know, back then the bang, game banging scene was mostly fights. You know what I mean? We used to jump cats. Um, sometimes we'd get into shootouts. You know what I mean? Sometimes someone would get stabbed. But it wasn't to the level of how game banging is now on the streets to where, you know, they're running around with 100 round drums or 30 round clips. You know what I mean? That time you'd, you'd have a shotgun or, you know what I mean, a little 25 or, you know what I'm saying? It'd be good if you had a little 45 or 9. You know what I mean? That was like a big gun at that time. You know, we weren't running around with no AR 15s or SKSs. Later on in my life, we would. Um, but it was a whole different thing to where, 
you know, the level of gangbang and had took on that LA culture where they were doing drive-bys. You would hear about them in San Jose, but mostly people would just, gangbang was a little bit different. You just get in your car with a bunch of homeboys and you just start rushing neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? Jumping fools, getting jumped, stabbing individuals, bottles, bats. Um, that was common practice after gangbang, you know? And we didn't really have any any Sureños to really fight at that time, man. Like cause when we used to rush the Sureño neighborhoods, we'd have to go to San Jose at that time. And when we did, half the time we'd go in their neighborhoods and it, it would turn into a rock fest where they start throwing rocks or they start whistling and a whole bunch of heads come out. So game banging back then had to be a, a lot more tactical. You know what I mean? And it would be like, okay, let's catch them, let's catch them slipping. Let's catch one going to the store. Let's catch one getting out of the house. And, and you know, we'd roll them around. Uh, my, I just I noticed in the comments, uh, uh, Wino from Horseshoe brought it up, man. Uh, shouts out to him, man. He used to run around with us pretty tight. And I had a 79 Regal. And I, I would dress different. I'd wear all blue and stuff. And I would have a bunch of young homeboys in my car. And then I'd have him in the trunk. And I used to joke around with him, man. This, Wino's my boy, man. I used to tell him, man, because hey, since you're from San Jose, you had to ride in the trunk. You know what I mean? But it was, it was never like that, man. It was more, he was more down like that. He didn't care. And so we'd have like golf clubs, bats and everything. And we'd roll into these Sulanian neighborhoods like Gramercy or Pokeway or off, off Vine Street or off, off Keys, you know what I mean, off McLaughlin. And he would know when I would slam the big brakes hella hard, he would know to jump out. So we'd pull up in these neighborhoods and we'd see like three or four of these dudes posted and bam, I hit the brakes. He'd jump out, jump out and it'd be hella funny because Wino would have a ski mask on, right? <laughs> And Wino had these big lips, so he looked like a Ben Davis monkey and stuff. And he'd come out with with a, a, a the golf club and just start cracking fools. And we'd be all all the youngsters that were in my car, they would jump out. That was game banging. You know what I mean? It started to change a little bit later on when the Sudanians actually moved in and, and they shot up my car. You know what I'm saying? And I think I discussed when I got out, man, like, let me go back. After I started proving myself in Juvenile Hall, the ranch, I ended up going to Elmwood, I got transferred from the juvenile hall to the county from running for the boys' ranch. And I started learning a little bit more. And me, I kind of started to change as a youngster. You know what I mean? Like, my reputation got more that, I, you know, I was a shooter. I was ready to ride. I wasn't no punk. I would take off on you on, in a minute. And I represented my hood really strong. And, I, you know, I banged North Day to the fullest, you know. And, you know, I'd have homeboys from different areas, from Capitol Park, uh, Horseshoe, uh, even these small little hoods that you never even heard of back then that were active and stuff, man. And I gang banged hard, man. After they shot up my car, you know what I mean? I think I, I, I think I discussed this before. I don't know how many shootings I did within like a, a, a four month period, man. You know, it, it, somewhere around seven, it probably was even more. You know what I mean, I can't remember everything that we were doing, but it was seven that I personally did. And uh, it was all at war. You know what I mean, we ended up, you know, it was back and forth, tick for tack with these Sudanians out there. They lived in these apartments called Indian Hills, and it was real treacherous at that time. And in gangbang, it was every day. That was my life. Let's go gangbanging. You know what I mean? Let's go, let's go hustle some money. You know what I mean? Let's get drunk. Let's let's get all, you know what I mean? At that time, we'd mess around with KJ, PCP, or the crank. And we go cruising, go look for females. And that was my life, man. I wasn't working. I wasn't trying to work. And um Fast track to how I count my case. So we were we were funky with that hood and going, man. Pretty, pretty, uh, um, pretty deeply back then. In fact, before all this in high school, man, my homeboys had older homeboys. You know, honestly, man, a lot of these dudes I'm not gonna speak bad upon because they all became solid individuals later on, a lot of them. And they weren't punks. But back then they were younger compared to my homeboys. You know what I mean? They were all like 15 to 17, and my homeboys had already been putting in work and they were older and they were bigger. And so a lot of times they were scared of my homeboys a little bit, which is common. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time I'd get ran up on by a little bit of their older homeboys and I'd be tripping, tripping out too and stuff. You know what I mean? And fear makes you react. And so there was a situation that happened where my homeboys went up to the high school and they tagged it all up, man. They put F Sunny Hills. They put F E V M C. They put F all these neighborhoods and stuff, man. And so I'm the only one there from my hood, man. You know what I'm saying? That went there. And I was like, you know, one of the youngest ones. And there was a bunch of them. So they all came up to me while I'm eating my lunch. I won't ever forget it, man. And um, there was like four of them. And they come up to me and they asked me who's crossing us out. And I'm like, well, he'll tell you. And he goes, well, 
they tell me this one dude wants to fight me. And I was on house arrest and all that and stuff. I said, well, I'll fight, man. I ain't tripping, but let's do this after school. And I call all my homeboys up. We can all get down. So what ended up happening from there was is they started pressing. They didn't want to see my homeboys because we tried catching them slipping a couple times where they, they took off running. You know what I'm saying? We roll up on them like in two cars and they, they would take off running. Same people. And so one of them tells me what you ain't down for down for your shit. And so I, I was like, fuck yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking in my head. I turn around, fuck VMC, VML. Bam, I get hit, dude. And I get dropped, man. I give it like about two, three, two, three kicks to the head, man. You know what I mean? I had a black eye and everything. I didn't see it coming, man. And the dude that took off on me, man, he he had hands. He was he was a little fighter, man. Feisty dude, man. And so everybody comes, I come back to the hood, and I got a black eye. I get picked up, man. I take off, and my homeboy comes and picks me up, man. You know, because nobody from my hood was going to school. And a lot of my homeboys, they were going to school in Overfell, Independence. They had moved from San Jose. And a couple of my older homeboys, man, one of my older homeboys came, man. A lot of people from Capitol Park may know him because he was actually jumped in Capitol Park, but he also represented our hood, which was Leonard Moreno, Joker. He came down. And the homeboy that tagged it didn't even show up, man. You know what I mean, he's supposed to. He said he was going to be there, and he didn't, even, he didn't even get there, man. But all my homeboys from my generation, a lot of them weren't even in the hood, came, man. And we showed up like 12 deep at the high school. And we sent two homeboys to the front to tell them, hey, go to the back. Let's get down. They didn't show. And so we all ended up getting on the bus to go to the hood. And see, they lived in one side of, of Milpitas, and we lived on the other side, basically, though. And, but one of theirs lived on our side. So it was funny because we all get on the bus, and they're in there. we're in there by like 12 deep, man. And um, that dude gets on the bus, the one that told me what you ain't down for your shit. So my homeboys start punking the shit out of them on there, man. And they tell me, I mean, they're calling him a bitch. You know what I mean? Get off the bus. You know what I mean? And that my boy wanted to fight him. Actually, he wanted me to fight him, but I was all banged up and stuff. I said, I can't fight right now, man. And so my homeboy actually got mad at me about that later on. But so my other homeboy, Rascal, said, you know, I got this, bro. And so we come off the bus and then dude gets off the bus. He was scared. And he tries to tell me, my, my homeboy Leonard's a big dude. He's, he's, he was big like me. He was like 6'2", like 270 back then. Nicaraguan dude. He tells him, you know what? You're going to fight this dude. We're not going gonna to show you how we do it. You know what I'm saying? And my homeboy Rascal puts hands on him. And he says he, says he wants that individual that messed me up next. So there was a lot of back and forth smacking and all that, talking. And at that time, one of the homeboys that represented my hood, like, to the fullest, just got back from Mexico. He was a Chilango, man. And everybody, everybody's heard about him, man. That dude has hands, man. Uh, ain't no joke, man. He, I mean, he looked like he was about four years old when he was like 20. You know what I'm saying? Big old bro shop. And he used to walk. We called him Little Man. And he had hands. You know what I'm saying? He had heart. And so we all go to meet him, right? And so when we're there, we're like about 15, 16 deep. Guess who comes down the street? That dude that messed me up at the high school that was talking all that smack and that we said we wanted next. So they start going at it, him and my boy that wanted to fight. And it was a pretty good fight, man. It was, it was, they were getting it. They were getting it. And then my boy trips and falls, right? And when he trips and falls, he tries to kick my homeboy in the back of the head. And then one of my older homeboys that was huge at that time, man, uh, uh, Grabs him and just slams. I mean, the dude flew about like eight feet, three feet in the air. His legs just picked up, landed, bam, and we just all started stomping him out. Bad. I mean, he we we gave this dude the business, and so what ended up happening from there was is um, this dude. I guess he had an older brother. They went later on. I guess they went through our neighborhood looking to see if they could find anybody, and they get pulled over by the cops. And the dude's all beat up. And this dude told on us what happened. And the funny thing about this, man, is this same dude, man, he's still out there active, active. And Malpitas, and I'm going to go back into that later on. He tells, right? And then in juvenile hall court, he testifies against my homeboy. My homeboy ends up going to the boys' ranch for it. He ends up running, taking off and, and goes to Illinois. He comes back and, and he's over 18. So... He gets basically uh, uh, 30 days in the county for running from the boys' ranch. And so um, 
he's back. He's in the neighborhood. We're kicking it. And so he's walking down the street, and this funk with him had kind of died down. And so he eventually runs into him, and these dudes start talking talking smack, right? Or, or they're talking, and my homeboy says, you know, your homeboy's a snitch. You know what I'm saying? He goes, Happy's a snitch. Angel's a snitch. He told on me. And these dudes got offensive, and they started jumping him. You know what I mean? Trying to jump him and stuff, man. And so it was on and cracking from there. And so when we're gang banging on these dudes, man, we're running up on them every time we see them. Downtown San Jose, Santa Clara Street, everywhere, man. And we're running into their younger generation, man, um, who at first called themselves ESN. And they lived in this house right there off of Calaveras, right? And they were kicking it with some other hood called LMV. Um, there was like three hoods, uh, K&R. You know I mean, they would be out there like 20, 30 deep at times, you know what I mean? And, you know, they were more by the park. They weren't. If we caught them anywhere else, like with my homeboys, they didn't want to see us and stuff, man. And like I said, we were game banging hard, man. We were shooting at people. We were jumping fools. We were the ones out there getting active in the streets while everybody else was was uh, uh, mainly partying and not, and not because all the Sudanos were next to our neighborhood. You know, so, you know, we had a little model in my hood, right, to where, say, if. It's me and my homeboy. We ran into five dudes. We have funk. We have to get off, man. We can't punk out. You know what I'm saying? If we run, we make the hood look bad. Therefore, the homeboys in the hood are going to fuck you up. If we see two or three of you and there's 10 of us, we're going to fuck you up. That's game banging. I mean, game banging was tactical. There's no rules. There's no codes. There's no nothing. It's about getting your enemy and taking off on them, man. And about hurting them, sending them to the hospital, taking them out, killing them if you can. That's what game banging is. There ain't no rules in it. There ain't no, let's go in the backyard and man up, you know? And so it was, you know, and that was my mentality. My mentality was if I was walking down the street and three of you guys jumped out and hit me with a crowbar, I'm not going to say that was a cowardly act. You did that because you wanted to do that. Now, when I come back and I got this AR-15 I, I, and I unload on your house, it is what it is. That was my mindset. And a lot of times I was always strapped. So we had just came up on a 12-gauge Mossberg, you know what I mean? That we got from some some uh, police officer's house that we hit, and it was a nice police edition, that nice one. And so, me and my homeboy Rascal were driving, and I see my ex, one of my ex old ladies. Her name was Flaca. She was from Solomon. She lived in Mopitas, and we pull over right there on Calaveras and uh, Carnegie, right in front of the in front of the Calaveras apartments, and they're all posted up right there. I mean, she is, and then she goes, "Oh man," she goes, "All these dudes are here," so they come out, man. And we, me and my boy start talking smack. We're like, Levos, and we're like this. And we see, like, there's a bunch of them, man. There's a bunch of them. You know what I'm saying? No embellishment in my story. People were there. There was probably at least at least 11 or 12 of them. You know what I'm saying? And we're talking smack, Levos. A couple of those dudes I beat up and then ran, you know? But here we are. We left. And so as I left, I tell homeboy, I said, you know what, bro? I said, we're not going to be like them. We're not going to be cowards and punks and talk smack just because we have... You know what I'm saying? And, and take off. We're going back. And I said, I'm going to roll up hella crazy. I've been drinking all day, too. And when I used to drink and, and get on KJ or do a little line of crank, I was I was 10 times more off the hook out there in the streets, man. I didn't care. But I was smart, though. So I pull up, man. And my homeboy has a red bunny on his head. He has a shirt off and stuff. And You know what I'm saying? I pull up. I'm, I'm in my Regal. I pull up. I run the line. I come up all crazy. And Calaveras is like a busy street. It's like a main street. And I just stop the car and I, I go to my trunk immediately. And um, he rushes out the car and he starts fighting it. And he is the first dude, second dude, just drops him. So you next, you know what I mean? So I get my, I pull out a pan I have for washing my car. It was in the back of my car. Actually, I wasn't in my Regal, as a matter of fact. My Regal, I got shot up. I was in my mom's car. You know what I mean? I forgot about that. I, I discussed before how my Regal got shot up by some Sudanios before. Um, they unloaded that hole. They unloaded it in my car, man. Flattened all my tires and everything. I lost that car when they set us up. So I was in my mom's car actually, and um, we pull up all crazy, and we're in like a little Honda Accord, like a '90 or whatever. And I popped the trunk, and she had a little bucket back there where she would, you know, with a rag in it for washing the car. I grabbed that thing because I see there's a bunch of them. I'm not stupid, so I start swinging all all crazy. And then he runs up, boom. And and he gets a little messed up. He gets a flat lip and stuff, you know what I mean? But we got in the car and we were like, you know what? We showed them that we're not punks. That we're not going to run all this riffraff smack and talk smack and, 
That was the whole mindset that we had, man. And this was three different hoods. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was weird because the original ones that we had funk with, these dudes had nothing to do with them, but they were from that hood. And so I said, all right, we, you know, we showed them what time it is. Now we're going to go back and shoot their house up. Because like I had told you guys, I got away with so many shootings at that time that I started, rep I started recognizing myself as a shooter out there on the streets. I mean, I was running around strapped everywhere, you know. And every time I had a gun and did a couple shootings, right, I would get rid of it just in time before the cops would really, you know, the cops would start hearing that I had a gun and I was doing these shootings, man. And I would hide it. But for a while, man, I was carrying that thing everywhere I went, man. And I, it was, for some reason, I was lucky. And so anytime you start to do your first shooting or your first stabbing, it gets easier every time. You know, and it kind of starts to feed you because you feed off your reputation that people are looking at you. Oh, you're a shooter. You're a hitter. And that was my mindset. My mindset was already that I hung the gloves up, that I don't play with these no more. I'm playing with this. That's who I was. That I wanted to be that extreme gangster. I wanted to be as high as I could be looked at. And that, that kind of translated later on in my career as far as everything I got involved in. I was seeking that recognition that so many other youngsters out there seek, you know. So I picked up these two other youngsters, um, Chino and my boy, Joe. And we said, look, man, I was so drunk at the time. I said, just start shooting, man. And what ended up happening was this one house where we had problems, man. We rushed it a couple of times. One time we rushed it with some cats from, uh, um, man, I want to say, uh, I think from v &H. Yeah, us and some, uh, uh, remember it was Sammy from v &H and another cat, Weddle from v &H because they were, we were old boy. We set it up where we had him go out there by himself one time and we hit around the corner and we had like crowbars and all kinds of stuff, man, because they kept on trying to rush my homeboy for talking smack about the dude that told on him. And I remember they said, oh, you guys have a lot of balls coming over there telling my homeboy and he's running his mouth and they act like they were going to come get him. Next thing you know, we come around the corner with us and a couple homeboys from V&H, rushed, rushed, rushed their pad, man, to where they all ran up in the house. And that's how it was. So... They knew us. The mom was involved in the mix. I mean, she actually took them a couple of times to jump our young, young homeboys, you know. And the dad was supposed to be some old veterano. You know, in our age, he was old veterano, but he'd never been to prison or nothing. But he was a homeboy. And so I end up, um, we end up going, man. And the mom sees us and she sees my car and she know they know us because we've been rushing them. I mean, I just beat up the dude like about two weeks ago at the gas station with, with uh, uh, when he was walking with his cousin and he, he ran. And so they turn around and when they turn around, we're shooting up this damn house in broad daylight, man, about three o'clock, man. See, that's how trigger happy I was out there in the streets, man, that I was getting away with so many shootings that it was three o'clock in the afternoon in Milpitas, which at that time, you know, it had this little gang problems, but it wasn't on that level. But I was getting away with so many. All the shootings I was involved in, half of them were in the daytime. Shot the house up. Bam. We take off. We think we get away. We go. We go get rid of the gun and everything. And um, they, she ends up in the police report. She ends up waiting for her husband to get home, who's supposed to be some OG, and they end up calling the cops on us. We would have never got caught. And so I dropped everybody off. I picked up another homeboy and told him what happened. You know what I'm saying? And um, I go. I go, man. I got to go check on my mom real quick. And at the time my mom was selling the house that we lived in. And so when I go down the street, man. I must see cops everywhere, man. They're waiting for me, man. And so I go in the house and stuff, and I'm tripping out, man. I'm already knowing what happened. And here comes about, man, there's so many cops, man. I can't I can't tell you guys how, how many there was. And I come out, and I come out like one of those dudes on, on the show of cops. Like, what are you guys doing here? You know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? And my mom comes out at the same time, man. And I feel bad to this day, man. They laid me and my mom down in my homeboy at gunpoint, man made us walk backwards, made us all get on the on the ground. And all the neighbors, they hated me, man. They were all watching the whole scene, man. So that was that's my story, man, of of and from there they came they came and, and brought me into the station. Um didn't make no statements, you know what I'm saying? Um they ended up telling on, on all of us and it just was a whole situation. The funny thing is it all started with someone that we jumped, right? Who who actually got on the stand. And his brother later on, I came to like, he, he ended up helping me out with the regiment out there in the streets. And even though I gave the dude a pass out there, even though I knew I should have pushed the issue to have him deemed no good. 
And he's still active out there in the streets to this day. You know what I mean? I got no hate, no nothing, man. But that's how my whole story was created and how I went to prison on my first charge. Like I said, that's that's where I started to elevate who I was. You know what I mean? A lot of it started when I went to the boys' ranch back in like 94, 95, and got, gained that recognition, started meeting a lot of homeboys from San Jose, and proved myself in there. And from there, my career started to transform, man. But the gangbanging scene back then as a kid, man, it was different, man. I mean, we started picking up the pace. You know what I mean, we weren't like L.A., you know, like Colors, where they were doing drive-bys every week. But we were getting active out in the streets, man. You know what I mean? We kind of set the tone for the future of, of the game-banging lifestyle. But it was a totally different. Like I said, you know, my first case, it was a red on red. You know what I'm saying? I ended up having to diffuse it. I ended up getting educated on it because there was no El Norte law at the time. You got to remember, this was around 95, 96. You know? And I started getting educated. I started learning about structure in Nuestra Raza. I started getting my recruitment and my indoctrination and things started to change, man. But it was wild times, man. You know, game banging was totally, totally, totally different, man. And, and, you know, as a kid, man, I could sit there and tell you, man, like as an 18-year-old, man, you're a kid still, man. And all I seeked was recognition. All I wanted was to have that some type of ego to where I would be looked at by my peers. And in the gang community world, it's a small world. Everybody starts to know everybody. You know what I'm saying? Even in a city as big as San Jose, which has over a million people, you know, my town would associate more with Silent Hill neighborhoods. That's just how it was in all the surrounding neighborhoods. You're looking for that recognition, man. You know what I'm saying? To be looked at as, as you know, someone who's a badass, who's a Mastingon, who's a metal metal, who's a, who's a an elite individual. Who, you know what I mean? Who got shootings on on his belt? You know what I mean, who got hits? Who got? You know what I mean? Who got a couple of hot ones? Who's putting in a lot of work? And to me, that's just that's where my direction of my life went. You know what I'm saying? Things got even crazier later on, but I can tell you like this, man. Probably as far as as far as putting in like work on a daily basis, man. 1996, I put in so much work, man. So many shootings, so many stabbings. I mean, there's there's stories like, like to this day where I start thinking, oh yeah, I stabbed that dude at that party back then, or I hit that dude with, with a with a bat, or I did this and that. That's how it was back then, and a lot of people from Sanjo can probably. Or even Lopitas or Sunnyvale or Mountain View. That's how it was back then. That's what game banging was all about, man. You know, it was an everyday commitment to being out there in the streets. And our whole stilo was was just symbolic of how the Sudanos out there in L.A. look. Just like how the L.A. Sudanos say, well, we didn't even know nothing about no North Daniels. You know what I'm saying? Back then, we weren't tripping. We were fighting each other. That's how it was up north. You know what I mean? The Sudanos, no disrespect to the Sudanos when I say this from upstate. They were, they were low in numbers. A lot of them were bices that just came over here and, and were not on that game banging level scene. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to them. They ended, up, they ended up earning their respects later on to a certain extent. But back then, they were no threat. You know what I'm saying? Half the time, more than half the time you run up on them, they say they, they didn't bang. Me from Mexico. That's just how, that's how it honestly was, man. And that's not to disrespect them or anything, but that's how game banging was. So we were fighting each other. You know, it was every hood trying to <laughs> to establish themselves as being looked at as an elite hood. You know what I'm saying? And I mentioned this before, and that's one thing I used to push out there on the streets where I don't care if you're from East Side Saw Home. I don't care if you're from West Side Saw Home. You're from your own little hood. We're from our own hood. You know what I mean? We'll match any hood. And that was our mindset. You know, somos pocos pero locos. You know what I mean? We're few but crazy. We'll get down. And we had that rec rec recognition out there in the streets, man. No one could say that my hoods was punks. We never punked out from anybody. In fact, we ran up on a lot of hoods back then, you know. But anyways, man, this is just a short spill of how 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 life was in the 90s game banging. And it's just basically I'm telling you a little story as far as like mainly from like 94 to 96 and how I transitioned and how the life changed and how I ended up getting caught up. I ended up catching some other cases in there. You know, 18 years old, I kind of, uh, they tried to uh, charge me with an attempted murder for slicing some dude up, uh, you know, but that's who I was, man. I was ready to do whatever was possible, man. It's like I had a I had a dream that I wanted to go to the Binta. You hear about the NF and stuff on the streets about, you know, when Spankio and Webb and all them got hemmed up, man, and you would not really say the NF on the streets, man. You would just say, oh, man, those are like the big OGs. You know what I mean? They're like, they're like the mafia. That's how our mindset was. You didn't speak of the NF, but you respected them. You know, and to us, man, we wanted to have our own, you know, we wanted to be, 
you know, we wanted to have our own, own uh, recognition in what we were doing, man, as individuals, man. And I think anybody who was game banging can, at that time can understand it. It's a little different now. Everybody's more about money. You know what I mean? They're, they're more about being flamboyant. You know what I mean? Like, they're using the, you know, the N word and they're going out like this and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? We never acted like that. You know what I'm saying? I know that there's some misconceptions that, you know, we were, how, how did Gunner say, <laughs> my God, Dedos, whatever. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that, man. We had, we had just as much fun back then with anybody. Africanos, Asians, whatever. It didn't matter. There was no, uh, uh, the North Day unity didn't come till later. You know what I'm saying? North Daniel Hoods were going at it. It would be common to go to a party, you know, out there. And if there was another hood that was deeper, it would be common for them to get off. And next you know, someone's getting stabbed or someone's getting shot. That's how it was, you know. But with that, man, someone asked in the comments, man, why don't you tell your story about how you got, got caught your first term? And this is how I caught my first term, man. You know, and no disrespect to those guys we used to funk with, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of them became solid dudes I became cool with later on, man. A lot of them I knew before we started set tripping, but that's how it was back then. You know what I mean? We were set tripping, we were game banging, and we were going at it with each other. You know, it was hit and miss. It was like a cat and mouse game, you know? And it was just weird, man, because um, I think I talked about the Sudano thing. Now, I didn't even know these my enemy. And this was different because I knew who these guys were, and I was actually cool with them. And if it wasn't for my older homeboys that I became part of their hood... I probably would have been cool with most of these guys back then as a kid, man. And later on, I became cool with most of them. I'd see them at parties. They'd go to functions and all that stuff, and it'd be all good. Some of them I even fought back in the days, you know. I actually made an amends years later to the guy's house I shot up, even though his mom had told, man. Um, I seen him a couple years later when I was going to court. And at that time, I, I, I was already a bro. And I told him, I said, you know, I didn't know how he was going to react. I mean... But I think he already knew what time it is. And I kind of got it. I'm like, you know, hey, you know, dispenser. You know what I'm saying? But you know how it was. It was game banging, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's where our mindset was at. There was no unity. And I was kind of like lacing them up, man. Like, if you got a problem, let me know. I mean, we could deal with that on a personal level. If not, man, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Because I shot his house up. <laughs> you know? And, um, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to push some more videos for you guys and content, man. So all you guys have a good one, man. This is your boy Flacco, man. Just a little discussion for you guys, man. Hot early in the morning. A little bit of war stories, man. Like I said, it was treacherous, man. It was treacherous back then. You know, I, it's a little bit different now. But now it's more individuals out there. It's more like it's less inclined to be like how it was, man. The, the hoods were actually close-knit, man. A little bit different, man. You know, and, and hopefully... Hopefully people can hear this message and understand that ego and recognition, you know, is a fear tactic that we fear in ourselves, man. And that's what motivates most of us gangsters is looking for an acceptance, looking for that recognition. And as soon as you quit looking for that and accept you for who you are, you don't have to make these negative choices. You know what I'm saying? I much rather went to school or got a trade or went union, you know what I mean? But I didn't, you know what I mean? Because of where my mind was at. And it took me years later to realize, man, man, I made a lot of mistakes, man. And a lot of it was based upon what I was seeking, the comfort that came with being recognized as a gang member. I didn't feel comfortable anywhere else because there was no love or respect that came with it. With that said, you guys, it's your boy Flacco. I'm out.